So I want to share a story with you, okay? So I grew up with a dad who knew his way around a radio arm saw. So growing up, I learned a thing or two about woodworking. I also took a class in high school about woodworking where I made many projects, kind of like this side table, that I still use to this day. But then I went off to college, didn't really have a reason to pursue it further, and so it kind of just faded off to the background. But then I got married, and my wife and I moved into a small house, and all of a sudden we had all this space with very little furniture to fill it with. So I started kind of looking around the house and being like, wow, that'd be cool if we had an entryway table here, or side table here, or had a shelf here, and then that quickly kind of followed up with this thought, well, I know a thing or two about woodworking, so I bet I could, you know, build these things myself. So, filled with this optimism, I started designing and, well, building my own furniture. The first project I designed was an entryway table that my dad and I built over a weekend, which was a ton of fun, and we love using the entryway table, it looks great. And then built this shelf that was much needed, and then built these two side tables that my wife helped me with, and they turned out great as well. But all these things were kind of just built with lumber that I could get from the local Home Depot. And so I loved designing and building all these projects, but they're kind of more just along your kind of DIY, just sort of simple builds, and I started getting this desire to want to kind of pursue more finer woodworking. But here's the problem. Didn't really have any tools, don't really have a lot of space for a large shop, and didn't really have a lot of money to buy a lot of tools. During all this time, I was on YouTube, and I stumbled across channels like Andy Rawls, Paul Sellers, Matt Esla, and I was drawn to hand tool woodworking. Not because I'm against machinery, although I'm pretty afraid of the table saw, but because I saw that with a limited amount of tools, most of which you get relatively cheap or second hand, and enough time, you can pretty much build just about anything. So I had to be super creative at first, making makeshift benches for projects, but eventually worked my way up to this more rudimentary bench, made my own DIY mocks and vice, and started just working on projects. So that was about a year ago, and since then, I've bought some more tools, continued to work on projects, started this channel, and just absolutely fell in love with woodworking. So I share all this story with you, because I want you to know these aren't going to be, you know, woodworking tips or tricks, but they're more just five things that I learned through my journey into fine woodworking over this past year. They're helpful things for me to keep in mind, and so I hope helpful for somebody else who's just starting out into the process of getting into more fine woodworking, or heck, even somebody who's been doing it professionally for years. And one last thing, if you're enjoying this video, remember to hit that like button. It helps others out, and it helps me out too. So, now let's take a look at it. So I don't know if squareness is even a word, but I always heard the importance of making sure your boards are square, making sure you're cutting things square, etc. But it wasn't until I started mentioning lumber by hand and cutting by hand that I began really truly realizing the importance of having your boards square. There are a lot of examples about the importance of having your boards square, but one that comes to mind is doing a through tenon. So let's say I wanted to lay out a morse hole on this piece of board. If these two faces are not parallel to each other, or in other words, if they're not both perfectly square to one face, then when you go to lay out your mortise hole, it's going to be skewed slightly in such a way that when you go to fit the tenon, it's not going to sit flush with the face. So this is just one example of the importance of having boards square. Another example is making boxes. This is a box I've been working on. And it's just amazing to me that when making boxes, if you're out of square ever so slightly, just a little bit, things just don't start fitting up. And they just come out kind of looking a little off. So squareness, or making sure you're pursuing square, is something that is very important. And it's something that I'm trying to continually work and improve upon. Now this has been a hard thing for me to learn. I'm a visionary at heart. I love to just design things, and it's so easy for me to just think of all these different projects I want to make, tools I want to make, just things that would be fun to have in the shop. But the reality is that those things just take time, and especially if you're doing things with hand tools. Obviously, I could get machines to help speed up the process, and hopefully someday I'll, I'll have things like a, a planer to kind of take the milling time and make that a little less, but even in that, working 
with wood just takes time, even if you're using machines to help speed up that process. So I added this to my list, more for my own benefit, but maybe it would be a helpful reminder for you too. But I know for me, as just a hobbyist woodworker, that I want to enjoy the process of woodworking. So by just acknowledging the fact that projects are going to take time, it can kind of free me up to be able to more so just enjoy the process of making. If I go on the project knowing it's just going to take a while, then I can just put in some headphones, put on a good podcast, and just enjoy the process of making something. So this is something that was kind of surprising for me to learn. I designed and created very detailed plans for this dice tower that you can purchase if you want to. And something I found that was super interesting when I went to go to build it was that I really needed to more so adhere to the actual measurements of the pieces rather than strictly adhering to the plans themselves. So that's why the plans were more just like rough guidelines to begin with. And then once I started building, I started working more off the actual dimensions of the pieces I was working on. It's kind of surprising for me at first, but makes sense the more I thought about it. For example, part of the plan for this dice tower was that these side pieces needed to fit perfectly within the box so that you could pack every away, everything away and then it would fit all nice and neat. So obviously, the interior of this box had a measurement. It was somewhere around 6 inches by about 2 inches. But when I went to go build the actual box, the measurements didn't actually line up that way. So when I went to go do the final dimension for the side piece, I really needed to reference off the inside of this box rather than just adhere strictly to the plans. The plans gave me a good starting point to roughly dimension my stock, but for the final dimensioning, once again, I had to reference off the box. So obviously plans are still super important, but I think they're more like guidelines to give you a good starting point. And then you just have to work off of what you've already built from there. Four Eyes Furniture has a great video about this that I'll put a link in the description to. And they talk basically about the concept of just throwing the tape measure away altogether. It's pretty interesting. I enjoyed it and you should go give it a watch if you uh, want to learn more about this concept. We've all probably heard someone say, sharpen your tools more, or even have the thought yourself, I should probably sharpen my tools more. I know something for me when I first started learning was people would say, you're not going to have any fun in woodworking unless you have sharp tools. And after much trial and error, I have to agree that sharp tools really are important. There are so many videos out there about different techniques, the best technique for sharpening, and I feel like I've just found that the best technique is the one that works for you. And you're only going to figure that out through trial and error. For me, that took a while. It took swapping between not using jigs, using jigs, until I finally felt like I was able to find the one that works for me. In my journey of woodworking, I struggled a lot with hand planing. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that I wasn't getting a sharp plane iron. I finally found a system that worked for me that involved using a ruler trick to kind of put a back bevel on the blade. And it was amazing what having a sharp tool really did for my enjoyment of using hand planes. I would often kind of avoid wanting to pick the plane up because I knew it would just kind of frustrate me at the end of the day. But when I finally realized and found a way to get that plane iron sharp and get those beautiful shavings coming out of the plane, it was amazing what that did to the enjoyment of using a hand plane. I almost can't wait to go pick it up and use it because of the, just that satisfying feeling of making those nice, thin, long shavings. So, this brings me back to the fact that I have to agree with everybody that sharp tools really are important. And, like people told me, it is amazing what the enjoyment of woodworking does when you start to use sharp tools. So I'm going to be joining the team of people that say, sharpen your tools and do it more than you think you should. Good old perfectionism. Now, I kind of started this video out with ranting about the importance of having things square. So it might seem like I'm about to contradict myself, but I promise you, I'm not. What I mean by perfection is overrated, or perfectionism is overrated, that for me, I don't need to get so caught up 
and scrutinizing my work to make sure everything is perfect. At the end of the day, it's just not going to help me enjoy woodworking. And quite honestly, most of the times when I show my work to people, they're not going to notice those little minute details that I notice that I think makes my work bad or doesn't live up to you know what I see on Instagram or see everywhere else. And that's really also what it just boils down to is not comparing my work to professionals who've been doing woodworking for 20 plus years. Now, don't get me wrong, I want to be creating high quality work, but I shouldn't expect myself to go out and try to cut a dovetail and have it be perfect the first time or create a box and have it be perfect or, you know, set out to do these things and just think I'm going to get these perfect results. I might, but even then, I don't really think that's the point. As I mentioned when talking about woodworking taking time, this is something I do as a hobby and so I want to enjoy it as much as possible. And focusing on perfectionism really robs me of that process. And here's the other thing that I think is funny or ironic about perfectionism. If I'm trying to seek to do something perfectly, it's going to prevent me from actually just doing whatever it is I'm doing. Like if I'm making a dovetail and I'm so focused on it coming out perfect, I'm going to antagonize over that first cut, I'm not going to do it, instead of just going out and doing it. And the funny thing with that is if I just go out and do it, eventually enough time, over time, I'm going to start making perfect dovetails. Because as they say, practice makes perfect. And so the irony is by focusing so much on the perfectionism, I'm actually going to end up not becoming perfect. Whereas if I didn't focus on it, over time, I'll get to where I wanted to get. So I just find it funny and something that I just need to stop focusing on so much. So like most of these points, this last point is more just for myself and maybe it will benefit you too. And that I just want to kind of throw off the idea of perfectionism and just simply go out into the shop and enjoy making, creating, and building something and not worry too much about how it looks at the end. So there are five things that I've learned over this last year diving into more finer woodworking. This video has been a lot of fun for me to make. It's been fun to reflect back on this last year and really think about what have I learned. And I hope, as I've been mentioning in this video, that these are going to be things that just help me enjoy woodworking more going forward. So I hope it's been helpful for you too. I would love it if you commented below anything that resonated with you that I shared or something that you've learned that you want to share with me or others. And as I mentioned, Please consider liking this video if you enjoyed it. It helps me know this is, you know, kind of content that you enjoy and helps other people know it's good quality content too. And lastly, I have more projects coming. I'm going to continue to dive into finer woodworking and would love for you to subscribe so that you can follow along with my journey into woodworking. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.